Hi, you are welcome to today's class. Today, you are going to use matrix, a 2 by 2 matrix to solve what? Simultaneous equation. Don't worry, it's a very easy stuff. It's very easy. Now, let's do this together. First of all, when you are given something like this and you are asked to use a 2 by 2 matrix to solve it, the first thing you need to do is you need to put this in a 2 by 2 matrix. Put this particular question now in 2 by 2 matrix. See how we are going to do it. Okay? Solution. Solution. Now, this is what? 4 and 2 and 5 and 3. We are going to pick the coefficients of our x and our y. Okay? And arrange it in 2 by 2 matrix. So, we are going to have something like this. Now, we are going to pick 4 and 2. They will form our first row. And 5 and 3. They will form our second row. You can see how easy it is. Pick 4 and 2, 5 and 3. 4 and 2, 5 and 3. That is our 2 by 2 matrix. We are going to multiply it by what? Our variables are X and Y. Our variables are X and Y. So we are going to add X and Y here. X and Y is equal to... Our constant is 8 and 11. 8 and 11. You can see that to arrange it is very easy, right? Very, very easy. Now, having done this, what do you do next? This is what you do. We are going to name our matrix A. We call this A. We are going to name our variables X. And we are going to name this constant B. So, if we should name this A and call this B and call, and call this X, sorry, and call this B, then we can write that A times X is equal to B, right? So, we now write that AX is equal to B. So, from here now, we are going to solve. I would like you to pay attention to what I'm about to do now. Now, we have AX is equal to B. Now, remember that in this particular arrangement, now, what we are looking for is X and Y right that means you're actually looking for x so what is our x we need this x to be on its own so it's more or less like we want to make x now the subjects or the formula now we don't need this a how do we remove the a you know that when we say inverse of something for example if we say inverse of one inverse of two inverse of two is one over two right and this one over two can be written as what two raised to the power of minus one so it means that inverse of 2 is what? 2 raised to the power of minus 1. Inverse of 3 is 3 raised to the power of minus 1. Similarly, inverse of A is what? A raised to the power of minus 1. That is A raised to the power of minus 1 is inverse of A. Now, you will be like, why are we introducing inverse of A? Listen very well. We are introducing inverse of A because when we multiply inverse of A by A, two of them will cancel. For example, this is 2. When you multiply 2 by its inverse, you notice that you are going to have what left? You have 1 left. Right? Yes. Similarly, when you multiply 3 by its inverse, which is 1 over 3, you will have 1 left. Now, in matrix, 1 is called identity matrix. In such a form that we have 2, this is a 2 by 2 matrix, right? Right? So, our 1 now in ident is an identity matrix, which will be in this form. Z um, 1, 0, 0, 1. This is an identity matrix. A matrix that has what? Uh, the leading diagonal, the elements of the leading diagonal is 1. Why other elements are zeros? So this is an identity um, matrix and it is the same thing as I and the same thing as 1. Do you understand? Now, just see why, what I'm trying to explain here. We are going to apply it right here. So for us to remove this A, we are going to multiply both sides of the equation by A inverse okay multiply both sides of the equation by a inverse now let's do it together stick with me you are going to see that this is a very easy question so we are going to multiply both sides by what multiply true multiply true by a inverse by a inverse so we are going to multiply true now by a inverse so this is what we are going to have a inverse times a x right that is for this side is equal to a inverse times b now just like i explained a inverse when a inverse multiplies a that is one over a when it multiplies a you are going to have only i remaining and we call that i in matrix identity matrix 
So this is what I'm going to write now. So when A inverse multiplies A, we are going to have I remaining. That identity matrix I explained to you times what? X is equal to A inverse times B. Remember that our intention is to find the value of X. We are trying to make X the subject of the formula, right? We want only X to be here. Now, if we do this, remember that when you have an identity matrix, if you use it to multiply X, remember that our X is a two by two matrix. When you use your identity matrix to multiply your X, you will have X remaining. Yes, because identity matrix is like one. When one multiplies anything, that thing remains. So when your identity uh, matrix multiplies any matrix, that ma matrix remains. So we are going to have X remaining is equal to A inverse times B. Now, this is exactly the equation we are looking for. This is exactly what we are going to use to solve this equation. Now, we are going to bring back whatever we have into this equation. Remember that our X is what? X and Y, remember. That is what we are looking for, our variable. So you can write that X, Y, okay, is equal to A inverse. Now we are going to look for this. And our B is what? Our B is 8 and 11. Now to find A inverse, we are going to use a formula called adjoint of A divided by the determinant of A. All right, all right, I'm running too fast now. If you have not watched my video on how to find the A inverse, okay, you need to check inverse of a matrix. I posted it a few days ago in this channel. So you need to pause this video, go there and watch how I did it. That is if you want a detailed tutorial on this particular topic. If not, just follow me and see if you are going to understand what I'm going to do here. But I believe you will because this is a very easy something but for detailed tutorial shake that video on what inverse of a matrix and learn it from there okay now let us continue we are going to get our a inverse so that is what we are going to work here because presently we have this and we have this a inverse is the only thing we don't know the solution to so how do we find our a inverse our a inverse is what adjoint of a divided by determinants of a Adjoint of A divided by determinant of A. So A inverse, A inverse, this A inverse is equal to adjoint of A over what? Determinant of A. Adjoint of A. Adjoint of A divided by determinant of A. Now what is adjoint of A? That is very easy. This is our A. Remember that our A is 4, 2, 5, 3. Also, if you need video on adjoints, I also have it in this channel. Just search for it and watch it, okay? And if this is the first time you are coming across my channel, please do well to give me a follow, okay? Just subscribe to the channel. Then help me to comment, like, and share so that this particular video will be distributed more for the benefit of our students. Now, our adjoint of A, this is our A, remember. Now, I want you to look closely and see what I'm going to do to get adjoints. Now, adjoint of A is all about, you know that 4 and 3 is our leading diagonal. So, all you need to do is you exchange the what? Exchange the positions of your 4 and 3. Exchange it. So, adjoint now. The adjoint of A is going to be, this is our matrix. It's going to be a matrix. Now, this 4 and 3, we exchange the position. 3 will be here and 4 will be here. You can see what I did. I exchanged their position. I put 3 here and I returned 4 to this side. Now, this 2 and 5, we are only going to change their sign. Presently, 2 is 2 plus 2, right? We will now write minus 2, this side. Now, this is plus 5. We will write minus 5. What we have now is called the adjoint of A. Very easy the adjoint of A. Now, we need also determinant of A for us to get A inverse, right? Now, A determinant is very easy. This is our A. If you also need a detailed tutorial on determinant, I also have it here in this channel. Now, determinant of A is very easy. This is our leading diagonal. This 4 and 3, okay? All you need to do is you multiply them 4 times 3. You write 4 times 3, okay? Minus 5 times 2. 5 times 2. So what are you going to have? 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 5 times 2 is 10. So it means that our determinant is going to be 12 minus 10, which is 2. You can see how easy it is. So we are now going to add this one over this according to our formula. 
the adjoint over our what? Our determinant to get our A inverse. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, our A inverse is going to be equal to this over D over 2, right? So you are going to have 3 minus 2 minus 5 and 4 divided by what? 2. Divided by 2. But you can still write this as 1 over 2, right? This is equal to 1 over 2 into 3 minus 2 minus 5 and 4. All right? It is still the same thing as half the multiply 3 minus 2 minus 5 and 4. Now, this is a very easy calculation to do. Now, but we don't need to do it. Now, we are going to just bring this A inverse into this equation here. So, we can now rewrite, we can now write that So, according to what we have here, we have that x and y, which is our x, right, is equal to our a inverse. We are going to replace it with what we just got, okay? So, what is our a inverse? Half multiplied by this. So, we are going to write half into 3 minus 2 minus 5 and 4. That is our a inverse. And we are going to use it to multiply 8 and 11. 8 and 11. Okay, let's continue. I believe you understood what I did. Now, let's all solve this side to get our x and y. So, x and y, okay, is going to be equal to half bracket. Now, this, we are going to multiply this and this. These two matrices, we are going to multiply them together. If you also don't know how to multiply two matrices together, I also have a detailed video in this channel on how to do it, okay? I have a detailed video in this channel on how to do it. Just look for it and learn from there. But in essence, we are going to just tell you how to do it. It is very easy. So all we need to do, we are going to multiply this row by this column, row by column, row by column. It's very easy. So the first number, we multiply this first number. The second number here, we multiply the second number. And we are through with the first row. Then we go back to the second row. The first number, we multiply the first number. The second number will multiply the second number, and that is just it. So let's go ahead and do that. 3 times 8 is going to give us 24. Whatever we got, we are going to add it to. This minus 2 times 11 will give us what? Minus 22. Minus 22. Okay? We are true with the first row. 3 times 8 gave us 24. Then minus 2, we multiply this 11. We give us minus 22. Then for this, we have for the second row, this minus 5, we multiply 8. That is the first, we multiply the first. The second, we multiply the second. So you are going to have minus 5 times 8 to give us what? Minus 40. Plus 4 times 11, we give us 44. All right. You can see how easy it is. Like I said, if you still do not understand what I did, check the video on how to multiply two matrices together in this channel. It is very easy. Now, we go ahead and solve what we have so we now have that x and y that is this is equal to half into 24 plus minus 20 you know that plus times minus is minus so 24 minus 22 will give us 2 now minus 40 plus 44 is something as 44 minus 40 right and 44 minus 40 will give us 4 so this is what we have now this implies that x and y which is this is going to be equal to now this half is going to multiply everything you have inside here that means half we multiply two and half we multiply four so let's do that when half multiplies two that is you are going to have half times two right and also half we multiply four you are going to have half times four okay you can see that this is very sweet, right? So you now have 2, we divide 2. So what you have here is 1. So you are going to have x and y is going to be equal to half times 2, we give you 1, right? And half times 4, we give you 2. You have 2. So we now have that what? x, y is equal to 1, 2. That means that our x is equal to 1 and our y is equal to 2. 
Thank you so much for watching and I wish to see you next time. Bye.